the simplest debug way is to use LED that connected to the HPIO pin. On the blue and black pill development board, the LED connected to the PC13 pin that has no peripheral and has low output speed. But the light source is not always convenient, since the device can be located in the case or in hard to reach place. So, instead of it, you can connect in parallel to LED buzzer. Also, many household devices uses primitive sound notification. You can see it in particular kitchen applications such as microwave for encoder rotation alert during the set time and an of warm-up notification. Washing machine for notification of button presses and the end of the wash. Multi cooker for buttons notification and start and end of cooking. The same debugging method uh, you may see uh, on the old PC, which can tell the error code by a series of beeps. And then you can find the cause of the malfunction using the error list. There are two different types of buzzers, passive and active. It could be through-hole or surface mounted. Both of these piezoelectric elements can have different resonant frequency and supply voltage. Usually it's from 1.5 volts to 12 volts. A passive buzzer does not have a built-in oscillator and it's simply a miniature speaker with its own resonant frequency, usually from 1.5 to 3 kilohertz. An example of this type of buzzer is LDBZEN1205, which has a diameter of 12 millimeters and a coil resistance of 47 ohms. The active buzzer has a built in oscillator, so it will beep simply when power is applied. An example of this type of buzzer is TMB12A05, which has a diameter of 12 millimeters and a resonant frequency 2.3 kilohertz. So, for a simple and quick connection and use of the buzzer in project with STM32, I made a small and convenient library tailored to work with HAL and Q. I recommend using a buzzer with a built-in generator, active buzzer, because in this case any HPIO pin can be used and uh, there is no need to generate a PWM signal. The maximum speed of the small buzzer is 30 to 40 milliamperes, so direct connection to the pin is strongly not recommended. You can use a field effect transistor with a gate resistor and a pull down resistor to drive the buzzer. Remember to connect a diode in parallel with the buzzer to reduce the effect of the EMF from back electromagnetic induction. I already have this circuit implemented on a PCB. So let's move to the queue. Create new project. Choose target. I use black pill module with STM32F401 microcontroller. Type any project name. Now enable serial debugger. Click on the PC30 or another pin and choose output push pull. Then right click and enter label buzzer. In the HPIO configuration choose pull down and check again label. It is important for library. Generate the code. The library files you can get on github page, so clone it or just download the archive with the project. I copy buzzer.h to include folder and buzzer.c to source folder, but it's better to use custom folder. Include library. Open STM32F4 
xxxit c file and insert cystic callback function into the cystic handler that calls every 1 milliseconds. In main c file, add cystic callback function and insert buzzer handler function. That's all. Now you can generate beeps by simple function buzzer go, where first argument is beep duration and the second one argument is beeps quantity. You can check out all allowable values and write down your own if you need. Just left click on mouse with control of on the define or right click open declaration build project and launch debug typically buzzers are pretty low don't forget to remove the sticker now you can use it to notify when device is powered on when data or command is received when button is pressed when sensor is triggered when some part of the code is executed or not executed, etc, etc. If you use passive buzzer, you need to use pin with hardware timers PWM signal. One of uh, my devices has pretty small speaker, so you can see it connected to the first channel of timer 11. In the clock configuration, check timer's frequency. Remember it. Typically, you need frequency 1 to 3 kHz, so divide each clock by the frequency that you need. For example, I need 2 kHz, so each clock divided by 2 kilohertz. Now I have 42,000. Good. Now if you put in auto reload register 1000, in the prescaler you should put 40, 42,000 divided by 1000. So 42 at minus 1 to both numbers. Generate the code. Open library file h file. To do that you can highlight the h file and open right click and open declaration or control with left click. In the settings here section change use passive buzzer defined to 1 because default value is 0. Correct timer handler type def number and channel if you use another timer and another channel. In the buzzer.c file you can check that now function buzzer on uses pwm set function instead of gpio set function. Before main loop perform buzzer init function to initialize timer with pwm signal, build project and launch debug process. As you can see it also works but configuration it's more complicated and pin must has hardware PWM, but you can choose sound tone. This simple and cheap method can be used while debugging a program of for a final device.